Hey, it's Raven on TDY, and I'm here with Dixie D'Amelio. Hello. Hello. It's so good to see you today. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for having me. I want to talk all about your new single, your album, which just came out. But first, let's start with a game. Okay. In your honor, of mm -hmm. course. This is called Dixie's Picks summer edition cool so just a quick this or that whatever one speaks to you the most okay let us know okay beach or pool pool oh i like that too the ocean is scary you know it's just pool is um cleaner i feel yes agreed barbecue or bonfire bonfire sunrise or sunset sunset sweet tea or lemonade lemonade a summer in the Hamptons or a summer in the hills? I don't know. <laughs> what hills? The Hollywood Hills. Oh, I don't know. I feel like the hills. May probably the hills, I think. What about boating or jet skiing? Jet skiing. Watermelon or pineapple? Pineapple. Sunglasses or a bucket hat? Sunglasses. Sunburn or a bug bites? sunburn yeah bug bites awful <laughs> get up early or sleep in late sleep in late nice i love how you're so matter of fact with all those <laughs> just to know who you are well congrats dixie on your album a letter to me thank you i feel like this really has been a long time coming because your first single came out uh back in 2020 yeah two years ago two, two days ago Thing. whoa yeah that's kind of cool that we're getting you like on the two-year <laughs> anniversary so have you always wanted to make music I've always loved music I never really thought about making it until I started social media just because like how do you even get started in that and there's not like I would I was part of vocal groups and choir and um theater but I never thought like anything more of it because there wasn't like a class to make music like it just wasn't yeah. something really anyone talked about and um not until like I met my manager who's in the music business it was like come record a song I was like how the hell do I do that but yeah you figured it out mm -hmm. and actually I'm really impressed because I was listening to your album mm -hmm. and I noticed that you have songwriting credits on like almost all of the songs mm -hmm. on the album so do you remember the first one that you wrote maybe not on the album but like the first song you ever wrote? Um, I mean, I, I co-wrote a part of Be Happy, which is like the first time, but I honestly didn't understand like what songwriting was and like how it all works. So um, my name isn't on that, but um. I don't know. I feel like just working with writers, like working with the writers who did Be Happy, they taught me so much about like writing and like Sam DeRosa, who's an amazing writer. Um, um, she kind of taught me a lot from the beginning. And then once I started getting more into it, I worked with Jenna Andrews and Stephen Kirk, who helped me co-write and executive produce the whole album. Nice. See, I feel like real world experience is better than anything you could have gotten in like a songwriting class. Oh, yeah. Way. I feel like... I could have looked up whatever, but I never would have known like what I'm doing until I was actually thrown into it and like figure it out kind of thing. So the music process, you make it, then you promote it, then you go on tour with it. Sometimes like in that order, sometimes all at once. It's very hectic. What is your favorite part of the process so far? I think definitely performing is the most fun. I feel like there's so much adrenaline and it's just so cool seeing like people sing back your lyrics or um how they react to different songs and I love that and I feel like it's like the best kind of feedback so the fan interaction I want to ask about this because obviously you're one of the most followed people on TikTok and I just feel like in the internet in social media people talk to you differently and interact with you differently on the internet versus in real life because I don't know there's like sometimes people like even comment on my stuff that I don't know and they'll be like oh like cool sis or, or something <laughs> like that and I'm like wait what do I know you are we sisters um but how would you say if anything at all there's like a difference between when you're meeting people in real life out on the road there's definitely 
I mean, I see myself doing it sometimes too. Like people you see on the internet, you think you have a closer relationship with them than you do. And people come up to me sometimes and like say something about me. I'm like, how do you know know that? Or why are we talking about this? I just met you two seconds ago. But it is something you just have to be like, this is just the way it is with such fast paced moving media and um, people seeing so many different parts and so deep into your life. People are going to think they know you better than they do. And that's just kind of the way it is right now. Yeah. I mean, I honestly commend you for it because it's so different than fame like 10 years ago where people didn't have like access to celebrities like they do now. I mean, I feel like people put out their own information now, which is really cool. Um, it's not just like random things and guesses and, oh, this person does this. Like I could post a video of what I eat in a day and people would be like, oh, I love that you eat that for breakfast. And I'm like, OK, <laughs> it's just it's a weird thing, but it is cool that people I get to show people what I do. So you're on tour with Big Time Rush. Mm-hmm. How is touring? Are you away from your family a lot? Does anybody come visit you? Do you get a little bit homesick? How's that been? Definitely homesick. Um, My dad's coming to the Philly show today, which I'm excited for. And then my whole family is coming to the New York show. Um, I really miss them. I miss like hanging out with them and seeing them. This is like the longest time we've been apart in years. And we're all really close, so it's hard. And we're just, like, texting in the family group chat all day, like, how much we miss each other. But it'll be nice to catch up. And then I am have, like, a break after tour, so we're all probably going to do something together. Yeah, family vacay or something. Yeah. When your dad comes out, has he been to Philly before? Have you been to Philly before? S- yes. So um, my dad works for Mitchell Ness. Okay. So it's, like, big sports apparel company in Philly, like, headquarters in Philly. So grew up coming here and then um when I was younger I went to the Made in America festival okay which was yeah. really fun and then came here for Jingle Ball and yeah been here a couple times okay cool so you're all versed in hoagies and cheesesteaks yes okay cool so um again the album A Letter to Me the new single Someone to Blame if you could write okay just like one sentence note to yourself okay. before TikTok mm-hmm about like what you're about to go through, whatever, what would you say? Just like a quick one sentence. It's high school reality show. I feel like that's the best way to describe my life. Wow. And I feel like it's so, I've definitely gotten a better handle on it recently, but I think it's just so weird because we're literally dealing with high school drama sometimes. And it's so like having people's opinions on it is so weird and just uncomfortable. But I feel like once I realized what this is and what I'm doing, um, it made it a lot easier. But a lot of it is just like high school drama that people are watching. Well, I hope that, um, Making music will help because then you can just like write songs about all those people and be yeah. like, huh. <laughs> uh, congrats again on the album, Thank all the you. success, the touring, and you can stream A Letter to Me now. Thank you, Dixie. Thank you so much.